in this tutorial I'll be covering arrays. Arrays along with variables are another core aspect of the workshop where once you learn how to use them, your capability to create what you want improves significantly. Arrays are simply lists of data that can be checked in game, for example all living players on a team or players on a certain hero. They can also be lists that are stored in variables such as vectors or text effects and so on. To start, let's look at some of the arrays that are built into the game by default. Let's say I wanted to set global variable A as a random value in array. I'll just go ahead and create the set global variable action and set the value over here to random value in array. This will just tell the game that you want to randomly select one value in an array of your choosing. Now what are some of the arrays that we can choose from right now? We can see a couple right here in our drop down menu, like all damage heroes, that's just simply all the damage heroes in the game, all dead players, which just contains all the players who are dead at the moment, and all heroes uh, contains a list of all the heroes that exist in Overwatch right now. And if I were just to select all heroes here, it, this rule would just set global variable A to one random hero out of all the heroes that exist whenever the conditions were met. But what if I wanted to make my own list to select from, or my own list to dictate which heroes a player can choose from? To start, let's create an empty array in global variable A. Every variable starts with a value of 0 by default, so if we make a list without setting an empty array first, the first value in the list will be 0, which doesn't help when we're trying to stay neat and organized. So in the last video I created a couple checkpoints that were located in three different positions. I stored the positions in three different variables which isn't really efficient, especially if we want to have a lot of different checkpoints. We can actually store these positions under just one variable in an array. So I'll just go ahead and navigate to where I want my first checkpoint to be. Now I'm just going to go back to where the empty array was created and I can create a new rule that modifies this global variable. The way we'll modify this is called append to array. This simply means we're just going to add a new value to the list. The value we will append to this array is my current position here. So I'll just select vector and my current position. And then we'll just do the same for the next two checkpoints. So let's take a second to look at this list in our workshop inspector. Here you can see our list starts at 0 instead of 1. This holds true for all lists and arrays in this game. Even when we look at player slots on the server over here in the lobby, the first player slot on each team is actually 0 and not 1. This, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is important to keep in mind, otherwise you may end up skipping over the first value in your arrays. So now to reference those vectors, instead of simply referencing the global variable, we can reference a specific value in the list within the global variable. To detect if the player steps inside the range of checkpoint 1, we'll make a condition that checks the distance between the player and the value in the array at index 0. So I'll just show you what that looks like here. Distance between the event player and a value in array global variable a is our checkpoints and the first index will be index 0 and we'll just do less than 2 same as last time so it checks to see if the event player is inside that ring and again this all works the same way as in the previous video the data is just being stored more efficiently whenever you use append to array you tack on a new value to the list. But what if you had a list of a certain amount of values that you wanted to update instead of adding new values each time? Let's look at an example from one of my custom games. In my dungeon game modes where players select a hero to take on multiple challenging bosses, I disabled hero switching so that the hero you selected was your hero for the entire game. This worked fine until people started to leave the game and rejoin to switch heroes, exploiting unintentional mechanics. 
To solve this, I simply saved the hero that was selected into the slot of the player that selected it whenever they spawned. Then, upon rejoining, a rule ran that allowed the player to only select the hero saved to their slot. So let's do the rule for saving the player's hero. Each player has spawned. True. Let's change the name of this so that we know what we're looking at. We will set the global variable at an index. The variable is the heroes. The index will be the slot of the event player and the value will be the hero of the event player. And then we'll just make a new rule here for whenever the player joins the game. For our action, we'll just set allowed heroes value in array the heroes variable and for the index slot of event player. Welcome so if I load into the game here and I select Reaper, let's take a look at our inspector here. You can see I have selected Reaper. So if I were to leave the game and rejoin in the same slot here, I would be forced to select Reaper whenever I rejoined. Now let's say I was in this slot, rather. Welcome to Paris. Comes honor. With honor. You can see redemption. here it set the third slot to Hanzo. So it works for each of the slots. What if we wanted to select or exclude certain values from an array? For that we could use a filtered array or remove from array. Let's make a rule with one condition. That any player on team one is holding crouch. For the action, we'll have it instantly put every support hero to sleep. To do this, we'll just do set status, and the player will be a filtered array. The array we will choose from is all living players on team 2. So for our condition, we will set the status on any living player on team 2 who matches this condition. condition. And the condition will be whether or not this array contains and the array will be all support heroes and whether or not this array contains the hero of the current array element. And we'll just set the uh, status to sleep. We'll put them to sleep for let's say three seconds. So here I am uh, with all these AI attacking me and you can see there are there's a Zenyatta and an Ana in there. Now if I press crouch they both instantly go to sleep for three seconds. So the opposite of the filtered array is remove from array. And this time we will remove from all living players on team 2 and the value that we will remove from this array of all living players are the players on hero and we'll just do the hero Ana for right now and so uh, here we have everybody on the point again I'll just go ahead and press crouch and you can see everybody except for Ana got put to sleep. The last thing I want to demonstrate for right now is sorted arrays. It's just what it sounds like. It's an array that's sorted in a specific way. For example, let's say I wanted to force a player to look at the closest player on the opposite team. I'll set up the start facing rule, something I will cover more in depth in another video. So this rule will force the player to face a certain direction will set the direction to the closest player. There is a closest player to option that we can use, however it's not very flexible. For example, for when a player dies, their position remains in the spot where they died until they respawn. So if you were forcing someone to look at the closest player, and the closest player was actually dead, they would still look at their death position rather than the, uh, the 
closest living player. So for right now, we'll actually go ahead and use first of. First of, we'll just uh, select the first value in an array. And to get the sorted array, just do sorted array. And for the array, we'll just do all living players. opposite team of the team of the event player. And then this is our value rank, which is how we will actually sort the array. And for that, we're just going to do a distance between the event player and the current array element. The current array element just tells us that we are going to look at each of the living players and compare their distance to the event player. Another thing to keep in mind is this value rank is in ascending order, so lowest to highest. So that's why we selected first of. It'll be the lowest distance between the event player and all living players on the opposite team. So here I created two dummy bots here, and this is the bot that we set the facing command to. So he'll be facing the closest player to him. I am the first player in the sorted array where it is comparing the distance between each of us and him. So because I'm closer to this reaper, he'll be facing me. Now if I get further away than this reaper on my team, he'll look over at that reaper. So that pretty much covers arrays pretty basically. If you'd like to learn more, check out my workshop tutorials playlist here on my channel. And additionally, you could join my workshop discord to ask questions, interact with other workshop creators and players, and stay up to date on my own workshop creations. Thanks for watching.